just follow along, please. All right, guys, listen. So we kind of summarized. Nick, yeah, sorry. So we summarized a little bit in our question today, climate change, global warming. Um, just to review a little bit, um, the gas causing climate change is what? Well, that's not a CO2. gas. Carbon dioxide, which is caused by burning of fossil fuels. Did I show you this graph yesterday? No. So the, this graph shows the last 400,000 years, well past human history. Okay? And it shows the levels of carbon dioxide is the red line over that period. And so what you'll notice is over the last 400,000 years, carbon dioxide levels go up and down and up and down which also means the Earth gets warmer and colder throughout those times. When do you think it's the coldest? Ice age. Yeah, these would represent ice ages, times when there's low carbon dioxide, less heat was being trapped by carbon dioxide, and the Earth was cooler, and then it would get warmer. If we follow these cycles, okay, carbon dioxide levels, they do go up and down through the years. But then we get to the end of this graph, and we start to look at modern times. This is 1950 here. So yeah, we went down, we rose, but then what happened after that? We just have sort of skyrocketed. We are well past okay, the last 650,000 years highest levels. We're getting um, up almost to 400 parts per million, much higher than it's been in a long, long time. Why has that happened now? Yeah, because of us doing what? Pollution, burning huge amounts of fossil fuels, has led to that increase in carbon dioxide levels. And subsequently, what we've observed is that the Earth is getting warmer. And there's no real um, change in this right now. Levels are continuing to rise. We are not doing a whole lot to limit our carbon dioxide production, but we are starting to think about that. I think I saw a headline on my phone earlier today that the U.S. possibly just pulled out of the Paris Treaty in which countries from um, all over the world were agreeing to limit their carbon dioxide emissions. Like we talked about with some of these other environmental issues, it takes like global cooperation to help solve some of these problems. And those sorts of treaties that help us set goals to limit carbon dioxide are one of the things that can help to stop this rapid rise and start to maybe level it off and prevent some of this warming. All right, so We talked about the greenhouse effect, right? Why a greenhouse heats up in the inside of your car. Can we watch this? All right. Another, we talked about this a little, but it's interesting to look at some pictures. We said that as the Earth gets warmer, ice melts. These pictures show a couple different things. This first picture shows the North Pole. This is the Arctic. This is in 1979. This is in the summer when ice is at its lowest point. And in 1979, pretty much ice went all the way um, to the land here in this section. If we look at the same picture from a satellite image from 2005, same time in the summer, the minimum sea ice, we see now we have all open water here, okay, um, 26 years later. And so this ice is getting smaller. This ice is melting. The other thing we have here, this is Greenland. Greenland actually is mostly covered in ice in the winter. This shows 1992, the ice in Greenland versus 2002. Obviously, what do you see? Sig significant decrease in the amount of ice on Greenland. Now this ice, as it melts, where does it go? Into the ocean. Causing what? Ocean levels rise. Ocean levels to rise. This is an interesting, they do this a lot. And the, movie we watched will do some of this. This is a picture taken from the exact same vantage point. This is in 1928. This is a glacier. This 
is all ice. And you see the mountains in the background. Since 1920, this is a picture taken to 2004. That glacier has melted. It has receded back all the way now. It's way back in the mountains versus when this picture was taken, it was right up in the foreground. Leaving behind it, water, a lake, land, and so forth. Obviously, plants, animals, organisms adapted to living here, probably not as well adapted to living in this ecosystem. That's one of the things we talked about. Climate change will change ecosystems, possibly make it impossible for organisms to survive in those conditions. How long would it take for like, a species to adapt from like, all the ice? Much, much longer. Usually for species to change takes millions of years. All right, um, so if that ice melts, so this, these next pictures are giving you sort of worst case scenario. If we don't do anything to control carbon dioxide levels and we just continue to burn as many fossil fuels as we are, CO2 levels continue increasing, Earth continues warming, all the ice in Greenland, in the Arctic, in the Antarctic will melt if nothing is done. And so that's a possibility over the next several hundred years. Um, depending on how we react. If that were to happen, the seas would be 40 meters higher. That's a huge amount. This shows the coast of the southeast United States, what it would look like if all that ice were to melt. And you see, what happened to Florida? It's gone. It's a bunch of islands here. Disney World, gone, underwater. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach. Areas maybe you visited, <laughs> Naples. Those areas are gone, right? They're underwater. Wait. This would be the coastline if sea level rose. New Orleans, gone, okay? All the cities. So where do, in general, humans tend to build their settlements in big cities on the oceans? Think about New York City, Boston, okay? Um, Charleston, Miami. Fort Lauderdale, um, New Orleans, Los Angeles on the other coast, San Francisco. People tend to settle near the coast. It's good for fish, it's good for trade, it's good for the economy, it looks nice, you get to look at the ocean all the time, it's fun to swim in. So people, that's where they tend to settle. But when sea level rises, those are the first areas that will be flooded. Now if you've been to Florida before, did you ever go um, hike a mountain in Florida? I'm guessing no. Did you ever go for a bike ride or run? Yes. Are there many hills? No. It's pretty flat. And that's why so much of it can flood so easily. Because it's very flat geographically, a small increase in sea level can flood a very large area. Same thing like New Orleans, it's even below sea level. So that's why it can flood so easily. Here are some other pictures of other continents. Oh, this is, again, North America. You can see this is the coastline. You can see what happened here. All this area has been flooded. South America, again, all of this flooding in these areas. Australia, okay, all this area flooded. Especially, this is an important issue in um, countries that are extremely concerned about climate change are island nations, especially like in Southeast Asia here, because that's where you have like Indonesia, for example, you have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people living on a series of small islands. And if sea level increases, those island nations are going to flood. And those people that live there, they need to find other places to live. And that could put pressure on different countries to accept those, those um, refugees. That's, the, that's Antarctica, if it were not covered in ice. When you picture Antarctica now, so this shape, that's all ice, but that's the land that's underneath Antarctica. And if all that ice melts, that water's going into the ocean. All right. Any questions about climate change? All right, so we're going to watch. Um, there's actually.